Hello, everybody in the room and hello, everybody in the matrix. Um, welcome. It's lovely to see you. Uh, we're very, very happy for this event, which is a, a joint venture uh, between CIRIN, the Creative Industries Research Network, and EDEN, which is the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Network. Uh, my name is Lindsay Steinberg. I'm the chair of the Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Research Network, and I'm also a reader in film studies. So I'm extra delighted that we've got uh, Juliana here, who's going to be giving us a paper. I'll give her a quick introduction and then I'll pass it over to you. So this is Juliana Lopes. She's a visiting research fellow at the Institute for Creative and Cultural Entrepreneurship at Goldsmiths. She's also a professor of cultural production at the Federal Institute of Brasilia in Brazil. She's coming here to talk to us about cultural policy and equality. And the name of her paper, as you can see, is Affirmative Cultural Policy for Diversity in the Brazilian Film Industry. So I shall stop talking. And now I shall hand it over to Juliana. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So uh, good afternoon. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here uh, to talk about my postdoctoral research project uh, called Affirmative Cultural Policy for Diversity in the Brazilian Film Industry. Uh, that I have been uh, conducting at Goldsmiths uh, over the last year. Uh, I would like to thank uh, the Creative Industries Research and Innovation Network and the Equality, Diver Equality, Diversity and Inclusion Research for having me at Oxford Brookes University. Yeah, I would like to thank uh, my academic institution in Brazil as well, the Federal Institute of Brasilia, uh, for the opportunity to be on leave uh, for academic studies. So uh, I will start uh, giving you, a, uh, giving you a, a overview of my talk today. So uh, I will present here my, my uh, overview of my research and the preliminary findings about gender and the race affirmative action in federal cultural policy for film production in Brazil. Uh, it's important to say that the re research is still ongoing, so I appreciate any comments, suggestions, and questions uh, at the end of the presentation. First, I will introduce the social and political context. Uh, I will explain key changes that happened in Brazil's cultural policy under the Workers' Party administration between 2003 and, and 2016. Then I will present uh, concepts uh, that allowed the development of programs and funding for the inclusion of underrepresented groups in cultural production. On the other hand, I will show that despite these developments, uh, gender and race inequality in film production uh, remained a critical challenge in Brazil cultural policy. I will provide next an overview of my research, presenting my research questions and the methodology. And finally, I will share my preliminary findings and final considerations. All images in my, pre in my presentation are from Brazilian films, supported by uh, the Affirmative Federal Funding Initiatives. At the end, I will show you the credits for this image and give you some film recommendations. Also, at the end, uh, I will, we will watch the official trailer of the Mars One film directed by Gabriel Martins. Uh, Gabriel is a young Brazilian filmmaker, part of a new generation of young Black filmmakers uh, that have emerged in the last 10 years in Brazil. Uh, this film was supported by Federal Public Affirmative Funding in 2016. Uh, and after arriving on screens of international and national cinemas and festivals, the film is now available on Netflix in the UK. Yeah, I want to start uh, mentioning uh, the cultural policies uh, created do during Lula da Silva's uh, first presidential administration. Uh, Lula was elected again last year uh, and is our current president after four years of a far-right government in Brazil when the minister, Ministry of Culture was extinguished. Uh, Lula's first government happened between 2003 and 2010. His successor, Dilma Rousseff, governed until 2016. Over this period, uh, sign significant change occurred in Brazil's federal uh, cultural policy carried out by the Ministry of Culture 
and I will highlight some of them. First, the uh, culture, the concept culture was affirmed as a social right of a Brazilian society. Uh, this means that the state has a pivotal role uh, in promoting access to, co to culture to the entire society. Second, uh, a broader concept of culture uh, that goes beyond fine arts and were oriented towards symbolic, social, and economic values was adopted. Furthermore, uh, public cultural policies uh, were informed by premises of cultural diversity oriented by the Global Convention on the Protection and Promotion of the Diversity of Cultural Expressions by UNESCO. Uh, the United Nations, Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. Another uh, concept that was really important for the development of the cultural policies in this period uh, was social participation, uh, was, a central to the, was a central concept to, to the development of the policies uh, with the participation of civil society. Uh, an example of that was the implementation, implementation of, of participatory institutions, such as the National Public Conference of Culture, the National Culture Council, and the public audience to elaborate the National Plan of Culture. Therefore, this concept recognized and supported several underrepresented groups through programs and funding to expand access to culture as producers and consumers. These groups included people from culture group, popular culture groups, indigenous communities, Afro-Brazilian communities, LGBTIQA plus populations, as well as cultural organizations in urban peripheries. Uh, an example of this uh, is the Points of Culture program uh, it is considered by many as a, as a, suc a successful bottom-up cultural policy model, uh, and it has been adopted by several other countries in Latin America. So now I will show that despite these developments, gender and race inequality in film production remained a critical challenge in Brazilian, in Brazilian cultural policy. And uh, I bring uh, here a graph from a study conducted by the National Film Agency uh, in Brazil, focused on the analysis of the 142 Brazilian feature films commercially released in theaters in the year 2016. Each film had the following functions analyzed, direction, screenplay, executive production, cast, and others. In the first graph, the research data on film direction by gender and race reveals a considerable, considerable imbalance. So what we could see in this slide is that white men uh, take the lead commanding 75% roles of direction. White women follow at, at 20% 20, 20 rep representing a smaller share. Black men hold 2% of the positions. Alarmingly, there is complete absence of Black women in the director's chair. In the second graph, the research data uh, on film screenwriters confirmed the same imbalance. White men still hold a majority at 60%. A combined represent representation of white men and women follows at 17%. White women claim 16%, indicating a not worth presence. The collaboration of white and black men accounts for 3.5%, showing case in modest diversity. Black men are at 2.1%, highlighting a deep underrepresentation. Once again, there is an absence of black women as screenwriters. Regarding this uh, context and these uh, studies uh, about Ancini, from Ancini, sorry, uh, here I will present now my uh, research overview and my research questions. So my first research, research question is, why has Brazilian federal cultural policy incorporated race and gender affirmative action 
into public funding to support film production in the last decade, between 2012 and 2022. The second uh, research question is how were affirmative actions applied to the federal public funding for film production to support newcomer black and women, women directors? So the methodology that I have been applying was for first a documental analysis uh, with an examination of legislation, legal frameworks, new articles, reports, and official documents. This review uh, serves as the foundational framework to contextualize uh, my investigation. Second, a, qualita a qualitative analysis has been uh, undertaken. I reviewed affirmative public funding calls promoted by the federal government for the film industry in the last decade. And after selecting a sample of affirmative public funding calls targeting short and feature film production, I have done a deep analysis of this, this subset of public calls. The examination of the public calls, uh, the public funding, aimed to map the evolution of the affirmative policies for film and also to discern uh, how gender and race criteria have been adopted within these uh, initiatives. And the third step is the, are the interviews uh, that I have been conducted, semi-structured interviews with Brazilian film policymakers from the two uh, funding agencies working uh, with the film sector in the country. So, as I said, is a, a research that is, uh, is still in, in progress. Uh, so I am still thinking, analyzing and systematizing my material. And today I will share these uh, preliminary findings with you. So under the preliminary finding, findings, uh, what's really important to, to uh, understand the federal funding for film production in Brazil. So we have in Brazil two agencies working with the film sector, SAVI, the Audiovisual Secretariat, and Ancine, the National Film Agency. SAVI uh, has historically worked on programs and funding uh, focused on educational, social, and cultural values. Uh, its main source of resource is the National Fund of Culture. Under the federal cultural policy framework uh, that I have mentioned before, the Audiovisual Secretariat uh, adopted concepts of regionalization and democratization of film production to address asymmetries in the film industry. In this regard, new concepts were adopted uh, in the Audiovisual Secretariat agenda, uh, such as diversity, inclusion, and cultural citizenship. The main aim was to include new filmmakers uh, in the market, especially from underrepresented groups uh, from Brazilian society, and also to support an exhibition circuit based on alternative arrangements to commercial logic. The Audiovisual Secretariat was also responsible uh, for la launching the first affirmative public funding call entitled in 2012, uh, which was called Short Affirmative Protagonism of Black Youth in the Audiovisual Production. The second agency for film, for, for film production in Brazil is the National Film Agency, Ancine. The National Film Agency, also known as Ancine, uh, focus on regulation and, and funding uh, of the film industry market. Uh, Ancine is oriented toward uh, the market and economic value uh, values and uses the resource of the audiovisual sector fund. The major fund for the sector in the country is the audiovisual sector fund. It also manages tax deductions for companies that invest in films. Through the audiovisual sector fund, the agency applied the regional inducer policy to support the production of feature films fiction and documentary uh, and animated, animated films as well, directed and produced by filmmakers uh, from underrepresented regions of the country 
for commercial lunch and in cinemas. Also, five years ago, a national film, film agency adopted he, its first and only affirmative action in funding through quotas uh, for newcomer independent directors, women, black and indigenous filmmakers. So yes, the, the, the diversification of programs and funding models uh, in Brazil of the two institutions work with, working with the film sector uh, enabled more equitable access to public cultural resources for minorities and underrepresented groups, particularly indigenous and black filmmakers. However, uh, it wasn't until uh, 2012 that an affirmative public call directly addressed the, the dimension of race in cinema. Uh, the first call, as I mentioned before, was published by uh, Audiovisual Secretariat and supported short films by young Black filmmakers. I consider that it this was a significant step uh, in recognizing the need for diversity in Brazilian cinema and promoting underrepresented groups. So I have I identified 16 affirmative public funding calls from SAV and only one from Ancini over the last 10 years. Eight out 16 targeted film production and uh, other ones uh, targeted electronic games, TV series, transmedia projects, uh, also used affirmative policies. And I conducted until now six interviews, uh, three from three from Ancini and three from, from Savi. So three uh, with policymakers from Ancini and three interviews from uh, policymakers from Savi. Why uh, Brazil's federal cultural policy have adopted uh, affirmative, pub affirmative funding? Uh, so uh, what I have been uh, discovering in my research, the first uh, dimension is the social participation uh, demanded change. So uh, it was really important to, to understand the role uh, that civil society uh, made in advocacy uh, affirmative funding uh, in public cultural policy uh, in Brazil. So regarding the social participation, I identified the three different movements from civil society uh, in order to advocate the inclusion of affirmative action in federal public funding for culture in the last decade. The first movement was the official participatory institutions such as the Public National Co Conference of Culture and the National Co Culture Council. Uh, here, I would like to highlight the role played by the Afro-Brazilian sector collegiate. Another movement uh, was the activism of Black artists and producer collectives, pressuring Brazil's Minister of Culture to recognize the, access, ex the existence of racism in the cultural workforce sector and the, the, nece the necessity of the development of affirmative funding for Black artists. Uh, this action resulted in the launch of a sample of the affirmative funding calls by the Minister of Culture in Brazil in different areas, uh, such as theater, dance, and visual arts, including the first one addressed to young Black filmmakers that I mentioned before. The third mo movement that I've identified was the emergence of the new generation of screenwriters, directors, and producers that came from low-income communities uh, in Brazil and had access to universities, to higher education courses in the fields of cinema, arts, and cultural production through racial affirmative policy in Brazil's higher education. So uh, the next uh, finding that I, uh, I am working is the favorable political environment. Uh, we, have, we had in 2010 an approval of the Racial Equality Statute by the Brazilian Cong Congress. So uh, the, the, the Institute laid a foundational ba basis of affirmative action policies in different areas and not uh, only in culture. A historical affirmative action process uh, in Brazil, drawing from the historical implementation of affirmative action in Brazil, particularly in higher education, 
and public service exams uh, created a, pre a precedent for similar measures in the film sector in the cultural sector. Uh, diversity and inclusion in federal cultural policy. So a paradigm sh shift in Brazil's federal cultural policy and film production uh, occurred during the Workers' Party presidential administration. This shift was uh, marked by a focus on diversity and inclusion in cultural policy and a supportive technical public servants. So what I can say See in my, when I when I am conducting the interviews with the film policymakers, is that these policymakers within film institute, institutions played an important role, being committed to the agenda agenda of race and gender diversity. Uh, their sensitivity and commitment contributed to the successful implementation of affirmative funding initiatives. Uh, these combined elements uh, facilitated the, the environment that allowed uh, the implementation of affirmative funding for film production in Brazil. The next finding is how, uh, the, my, my second research question, uh, how affirmative action is adopted in funding for film production in the country. So oh, what, I, what I identified uh, is, uh, are some uh, models of affirmative funding. And here I try to systematize uh, all of them. So the first one is targeted leadership support. So funding, uh, some, some specific fundings were directly allocated to women and black filmmakers in leadership in leadership roles, uh, both as directors and producers and screenwriters. Uh, this applies to, to both individuals and film companies. Uh, the second one is the them uh, thematic focus. So funding is directed towards film narratives that align with specific themes, such as Afro-Brazilian cultural heritage and indigenous and female-centric stories. The third one, our, our regional inclusivity. Uh, an inductive scoring system is applied as a regionalization criteria aiming to support filmmakers from underrepresented regions in Brazil. And the fourth one, an intersectional criteria. The inclusion of racial and gender quotas is done in an intersectional manner, considering other factors uh, like supporting newcomer directors and the regionalization efforts. Uh, these models uh, collectively contributed to a more inclusive, inclusive and diverse landscape in Brazilian film production by addressing gender, racial, and regional asymmetries. Going to my final considerations, I would like to highlight some <clears throat> ideas and some things that I have been uh, analyzing, uh, considering these uh, preliminary findings that I uh, show it to you today. So, uh, yeah, first, what we could see is a lack of structured public policies and the legal framework. Black culture, cultural movements and air, air artists play a pivotal role in pushing for affirmative action in federal funding, uh, including support based on race and gender in public funds for film production is a big step, as I said, for diversity in Brazilian cinema. Uh, it helps give a voice to underrepresented Black women filmmakers and ensure more fair access to public cultural resources. However, uh, it's important to note that the fundings introduced by the two institutions working with the film sector in the country uh, are more light initiatives uh, than a structured plan uh, for governing pub public funding. Even with the Statute of Racial Equality, there wasn't a legal framework uh, for including race and gender affirmative action into public funding for cultural and film project projects in Brazil until 20 2022. And finally, to expanding resources for film production is really relevant 
but it's not enough. Uh, what I could see is that uh, the affirmative action uh, has been applied in, in funding for film production and in other in, in not in other areas uh, of of the film chain. So we need to look at the whole process, especially uh, the access uh, for education and training in cinema and audiovisual audiovisual courses, and they distributed and sh and how films uh, are distributed and shown in the country to make the Brazilian film industry more inclusive and impactful. Here are some of my references. Some of them are in Portuguese, other one in English. Uh, what I would like to to, to highlight is that my uh, academic literature englobe uh, different uh, perspectives, especially uh, reading articles and books uh, regarding themes related to cultural policy, cultural studies, uh, racial relations, film production. And I would like to highlight here uh, that uh, over my period as visiting research fellow at Goldsmiths, I two works were really helpful for me. The work uh, that was the work of Clive Nyonka, uh, Diversity Pie, Rethink Social Exclusion and Diversity Policy in the British Film Industry. Another uh, work was uh, from Anamik Saha, Race and Cultural Industries. So I think the, the thinking that uh, how these uh, professors have been working here in the context of, uh, in the British context, uh, is really helpful to think the Brazilian context and regard the, the, the specific context, the context of e both countries. Here are some image credits of the images that I, that I put in the presentation. So we have here some short films and feature films. So uh, Mars One that I will show you next and Jerusalem's Day uh, uh, director, directed by Viviana Ferreira, Viviane Ferreira, The Bruda's Mind uh, directed by Del Cardoso, Tia Ciata, uh, Ant, Ant Ciata, uh, Mariana uh, directed by Mariana Campos e Raquel Beatriz, Nothing from Gabriel Martins uh, and Kaique Spool, uh, directed by Rafael Gustavo da Silva. All these films, they were um, made by uh, affirmative funding. Yeah, and I would like to thank and to, sh uh, to show the film. My dream is to become an astrophysic and participate in a mission on Mars 1. Is that what you want? Go to Mars? It's beautiful. It's a dream. Beautiful. A situação tá boa, não. As contas não estão batendo. O tanto que a gente trabalha, a gente carrega esse peso nas costas, ué, a vida toda, meu camarada. Tô atraindo coisa ruim, eu sinto isso. Você acha que o papai ia ficar bravo se eu não quisesse me jogar futebol? Fica firme, rapaz. Se quiser ter esse corpo aí, presta atenção no jogo. Você para de pressionar esse menino do jeito que você tá fazendo. Minha namorada? Eu não peço nada pra vocês. Eu não peço nada nessa casa. Tá achando que eu chegar aqui e avisar que tá indo? Você tem mãe, você tem pai, você tem irmão. Eu tô viva. Você é muito parecida comigo. Mais do que você pensa. O seu sonho é mesmo ir pra Marte? Não esquece de mim, não, viu? Nunca, deve. Uai, a gente dá um jeito. Ok, so we've got some good time now for questions and answers. Um, I'll open it to the floor. I've got questions myself, of course, but I won't hog the microphone. Um, are there any questions? I'll just repeat that question for our online audiences. That was a question about the trailer and its marketing, because it did seem quite targeted to international or maybe festival audiences. So Maya's question is, how are these types of films marketed maybe nationally and internationally? So 
yeah, this film uh, with a very specific case because this film is uh, has been distributed by Array. Uh, it's a company from the US, from Ava de Manel. Um, that she works, uh, she she has a work with, uh, to to promote diversity uh, around the world. Um, yeah, this film uh, is I think a special case for us uh, because this film um, ma made a career in international international festivals uh, around the world. And uh, because of this partnership with Apple Israel and Array, uh, this, this film now is available here in UK, US, Canada, and New Zealand. Uh, I don't know the, the terms of the contract that uh, the, this film has with Array and with Apple, um, but I think it's really important uh, to think about the global connection. That uh, can that we can have uh, around to 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 distribute to distribute the film uh, around the world with this kind of partnership and uh, they they the funding the affinity funding for film production uh, was not for the distribution was on, only for the the for film for the to, to do the film. And the distribution is a really difficult step for the filmmakers because uh, they need to 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 get other kinds of funding uh, to do the distribution, uh, national and international way. Uh, so uh, it's more um, uh, uh, an action, an definite action of the the company or the the filmmaker. Uh, that uh, to find some partnerships, national and international. And what we can see as well uh, is that uh, there are uh, 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 a strategy uh, from, uh, from uh, some filmmakers in Brazil that is to uh, launch the film first in international market. And after uh, that, the film uh, uh, is released in Brazil. Uh, because when the film is first launched, launched in international market in a big festival like Sundance uh, or uh, Kani and other festivals like that, uh, uh, there are so many uh, media around the film and there's so many news, news articles, uh, uh, interviews, uh, and they, these releases in international market uh, give, uh, give a spotlight when, you, when the film arises in the national market. So uh, it's an, it's a, I just want to make okay. sure we catch all the stuff. Oh, sorry, sorry, no, I can't see here. So it's a, it's a, a strategy that I can see uh, important is, is, is a thread that I can see that the filmmakers are, are, are made in. Uh, and some of these filmmakers, they have a, a kind of co-production. So they have money from Brazil, they have funding, they have funding from Brazil, and they have funding from uh, other countries as well. That's great, thanks so much. I did wanna ask questions around that tension almost between the, the local and the international and the strange mechanisms that require international approval almost before national interest. It's sort of like, well, you did great at the, the Cannes Film Festival, now we'll invest in you. It seems to be a, an interesting mechanism for a lot of nationally funded uh, cinemas. Do we have any other questions? Yes, please. Okay, that's a wonderful question. Thank you, Sylvia, about whether or not the producers who are getting this funding from the government are getting any support, instruction, uh, sort of help with the, the politics and the realities of distribution. That's the question. Uh, so, yes, uh, what, I, uh, um, what I would say is that uh, this kind of uh, uh, distri the distribution uh, is more uh, likely to 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 happy uh, in market labs uh, because there are so many market labs in audiovisual cinema sector in Brazil and in these market labs uh, the filmmakers uh, go to these film these uh, market labs 
and there they are um, able to find a partnership for a distribution. Uh, I I I don't know if I have if if the Brazil has any kind of funding for this distribution. I think Ancini has. Uh, well, can you help me out here? <laughs> yeah. Ancini and and like a call for the state government. There are many funds for distribution and to finalization the film. Okay. Not one to produce, but it's a few opportunity to to get for distribution. Yeah. yeah for yeah. distribution and finalization the film. Nice. Yeah, and, and but it's an it's another another funding that another step. Yeah, that you need to apply for to write a project and apply for a new funding for for distribution uh, specific. And but uh, in this perspective of a uh, format of a uh, training. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. I was just aware of like. Oh, no, I'm so sorry. sorry. But in this perspective sorry. of a uh, a kind of training or of a kind of courses. Uh, I think there is some something happen in the States, as maybe as Pessini. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. The federal government, not the federal government. Yeah. also has a call for distribution, but there are many calls from the state government. Yeah, because Brazil uh, is a huge country, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and we have a, a federative uh, government in the country. So we have the federal government and the state government, and uh, São Paulo and uh, Pernambuco and Rio. Uh, they have uh, developing, having been developing. Uh, some affirmative policy. Uh, São Paulo uh, has a specific company for, for film production. And Viviane Ferreira, one of the directors that I uh, present here today, she is the president now, uh, today, uh, nowadays, of this uh, company, film company in São Paulo. And uh, Especini, uh, specifically, uh, have been developing different uh, kinds and models of affirmative action. Uh, but uh, only filmmakers from Sao Paulo uh, are able to apply for this funding because it's a local funding and not a federal funding. Uh, and my research uh, uh, was uh, focused on the federal funding and not in the local fundings from the state until now, maybe when I go back to Brazil. <laughs> I can start, yeah, another step. Because <laughs> you did mention too that it's the 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 underrepresented regions that they want yeah. to start looking to. Now, are you seeing any investment in policy or funding being given from the federal government to those regions, or is that? Yeah, exactly. Uh, there are uh, in in the national in the national film agency. Uh, there are some specific uh, uh, fundings that's called uh, arrangement, um, regional arrangement fundings mm -hmm. uh, that is uh, aimed to developing uh, films in specific states in the country, um, especially in the north and northeast and middle east of the country, mm -hmm. because we have a market concentration in Rio de Janeiro and São Paulo. So uh, in these under other uh, these underrepresented regions in the country, especially the states of North, Northeast, and Middle East, uh, they have been investing uh, in these kinds of uh, policy uh, between um, a partnership uh, between the National Film Agency and the state, mm -hmm. and the federal funding go to the local funding. And these are, uh, have been um, developing uh, regional, other kinds of uh, films from these underrepresented regions. That's great. And I think we have a question here. I'm going to move a portable microphone here. Uh, so hopefully I can catch you. I'll just hover. <laughs> if you want to ask thank, your question, I'll thank, catch it. Thank you. Thank you. And congratulations again. Thank you. The, the research. 
Man, that as you say, the research is on progress. Now, let's, I, I would like to ask you how far you want to go in this research, because now we have many young black men, black women, start on film and did to this affirmative policy. And then how far do you want to go with this research to, to get these new younger filmmakers? Yeah. So uh, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Uh, yeah, I am thinking. Um, it was. It was. I, I needed to. Uh, <laughs> it's hard to it's, stay. It's really anchored. hard. I'm sorry. so sorry, sorry. for sorry. the challenges of time. Yeah. No. It's yeah. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. Um, when I start this research, uh, I had an idea that I would like to interview the filmmakers uh, and to understand how the policy has been impacted the production of these uh, filmmakers in the country. Uh, how, however, I had a small, a small period of time here uh, in the UK and I decided to understand the, the, the public cultural policy first and what happened in Brazil over this time, what happened in these two agency film institutions. And I decided to interview the film policymakers, uh, especially because uh, we had in Brazil a difficult time under Bolsonaro's government. And I would like to understand it. Bolsonaro was our last president uh, from a far right um, government and I would like to understand what happened uh, with uh, this policy and these initiatives uh, over these last years, over these 10 years first and, and after that maybe go to, uh, to another step of the research and interview the filmmakers. However, uh, we have now uh, the, the these affirmative policies. They are uh, are coming back in Brazil. Uh, so we have now a minister of culture. <laughs> after the minister of culture uh, was extinguished by the the old government, uh, and uh, until now, I think the audiovisual secretariat uh, launched uh, three or four affirmative funding. So. Uh, the last one was in 2018, and now 20, 20, 2023, we are seeing again uh, these policies uh, coming back. So I need to uh, to think better if I will go far uh, with these views of the policy, and because I think uh, we have now in Brazil a special moment because uh, we have... Uh, uh, the Minister of Culture is Margaret Menezes, a black woman. Uh, the audiovisual uh, secretary has been, uh, is being run by Joelma Gonzaga, is a black woman. And I'm really, um, uh, I, I would like to understand the views of the uh, policymakers that uh, are in the Minister of Culture now uh, at this time. Um, uh, yeah, and uh, maybe uh, another uh, possible um, way is to do a study case uh, because I am really interested in this uh, affirmative funding low budget film uh, that were awarded Mars One, this film that we, we watch here, uh, and Viviane Ferreira's film, Um Dia Com Geruda, Idal Cardoso. And I would like to understand because uh, they are feature films and feature films that were launched commercially and arrived in cinemas, in uh, Netflix and other streaming streamings. Uh, and I would like to understand the model, the production model of these films, uh, especially because I think it's a, a challenge uh, until now uh, to have feature films launched uh, in Brazilian cinemas, in festivals by uh, uh, black women, black men in the country. So yeah, I need to to decide. I, there are so many possibilities. Thank you very much. 
I mean, there's so many places that you can go with this research. It's really good to hear about it, especially if this is phase one. I'm looking forward to phases two, three, and beyond. Um, do we have any other questions for the room? I think we have two minutes for a final question. <laughs> yes, um, from Hannah. I just had a question about the research process because also looking at the literature that you that you um, had on the slide um, in the end of the presentation, how do you feel about using literature that is you know comes from a very specific context here, like Amamik Sama, who you mentioned, he's very much focused on the British for the sometimes US American uh, media landscape, and he's very concerned about sort of like with the commodification as this this mm. issue um when it comes to race and racialization. And on the other hand, you had the I think Kilong Batsinuma, which is in itself speaking about like already getting away the history and that whole traction story kind of um in, as a concept, right? So how 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 do you feel about applying literature and knowledge that is produced here in this context and to a very different context in Brazil? Yeah. Is it useful? Did you find it useful? Are you going to continue working? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's it's a good question, and I thank you. Um, and I think it's a it's a challenge uh, to um, to deal with different research, uh, different uh, kind of uh, literature, academic literature, uh, because uh, as uh, you said, Anamik Saha works with a specific context here, and so many other uh, articles that I read, uh, it's the same. Uh, but I think uh, there is a kind of a global thing that's really important to understand the con for me, my experience here in the UK was really important to understand how the discussion has been um, happened here in in the UK. Uh, and I was really sur surprised uh, to identify uh, so many different perspectives. Uh, in academic literature, in talks, in so many different uh, uh, spaces, uh, how uh, we can think globally about these uh, issues of inequality, uh, diversity, inclusion in the cultural, uh, cultural industries and the creative industries. Um, but I think it's a uh, I think I am still uh, trying to understand uh, this uh, academic literature. And I I would like so much to go back to Brazil because it was really rich for me to, to be in contact with, with this literature, uh, because I think I can have another point of view that's not only a point of view of, of, from Brazil, Okay, Brazil has a specific context, the country in, South, in, South, in Global South, in Latin America, we have so many uh, in different inequalities across uh, the country, uh, but put in our con context, in, in perspective or in dialogue with the British context, uh, I think it was really important to understand how these uh, main concepts of diversity, inclusion, inequality, uh, how these concept, concepts have been thinking in an academic context here in the UK. So I, I, I want to go back to Brazil and still working with this academic literature that I discovered here, uh, because I think they are really supportive, supportively for me to understand in, in a more broad perspective, in a more broad, pers yeah, more broad perspective. So. Thank you. That's great. Thank you very much. If we can just thank Juliana again for a wonderful thank talk. Thank you. Thank you very Thanks much. All in the matrix.